popolazione, si avvisa la popolazione che a Gadoni, oggi 2 giugno 2023, il comune di Gadoni è lieto di ospitare la troupe televisiva del programma The Bot Show con il conduttore Baci del Buono e il suo cameraman Nicolò Rocca Tagliatta. Questo servizio presenterà le bellezze della miniera e del paese sulla televisione Sky Sport. Oggi siamo a Gadoni. It's all true. Today we are in Gadoni to test a rib. But those who know Sardinia is aware that Gadoni is in the inland of this beautiful island. To present you this rib, we have to take a step back and start from here to get to know the origins of its name. I'm talking about R10 by Rame Yachts. Rame in Italian means copper, which has been one of the main elements for the economic development in Sardinia, and especially of Gardoni. And here is the copper mine that has historically been the most important in all of Europe, Fontana Raminosa. The first copper extractions date back to the Neuragic era, more than 2,000 years before Christ. Then this site survived to the Phoenicians, the Romans, until 1800, when copper extraction became a massive industrial operation. Just think that during the 80s, copper extraction reached more than 1,200 tonnes of material per day, but just 2% of it was actually copper. As costs were too high, they decided to close the mine. The value of this mine, and of copper itself, is still fundamental of tradition and roots of this wonderful land. If you were thinking that Sardinia has two different souls, one of the land and one of the sea, well, you were wrong, because its heart is as blue as water and copper melts with the sea. And here is the Phil Rouge from the inland to the beauty of the sea. It's called R10 by Rama Yachts. R10 is a rib with a simple lout, which is connected to the tradition of this boat. The lines, as a handrail and the working cleat at the bow, recall the origins of this type of boat, but the Sardinian sole stands out with important innovations that can be noticed starting from the aft swimming platforms. Well, actually, they are not swimming platforms because this area has not been thought for people embarking or disembarking. Of course, there is an emergency ladder, but this is a technical area devoted to the engine's accessibility and to the cleats when mooring. Speaking of cleats, have you seen their design? They are in 5mm aluminium profile, very sturdy yet lightweight. So if I go for a swim, from where do I hop back on board? Well, the solution they found is really interesting, but I'll tell you everything in a minute. The C-shaped seating in the aft cockpit is set back on the longitudinal plan of the rib. That is because you don't need much space beyond the backrest. It is comfortable for five people and it has an aluminium structure. The central telescopic table, which complements the sunbathing area, is very sturdy so that you don't have to worry about how to move when you lay down. I think we can also jump on it. Are you ready? To finish the cockpit area, there is a backward-facing seating for seven people. Down here, there is a 150-litre custom fridge. Now it's time to tell you one of the gems of this project, the engineering that has been thought for the accessibility to the sea, which is right here amidship. No, do not think that you have to climb on the tubular like often happens. Here everything is more comfortable and technological.
questa parte di tubolare diventa una vera e propria This part of the tubular becomes a real platform that opens onto the sea. It is 60 centimeters wide. It has four telescopic stairs and the handles to ease the climb. This is perfect also for those who might have mobility problems. Its simple deck layout makes R10 a perfect model for charter or for a maxi yacht tender, everything in addition to the owner's use. The helm station has been especially thought for this with an intimate and exclusive seating for the captain, which is separated for the guests on board. The dashboard design and the ergonomics of the station recalls the most modern automotive models. The central formwork is not so deep so as not to reduce the footfall of the forward area, but it is as wide as to allow a toilet compartment below deck. Sardinia Norisei's marble, bleached oak, handmade and all the details that recall nature and the name of the shipyard are just a few of the possible customization possibilities of this model. The use of carbon or other woods can be requested in the designing phase. At the bow you have the same stern configuration. C-shaped seating is completed with a second foldable table. Everything in front of forward-facing seating folded on the formwork. Here the tubular design has been conceived with a little reversed shear and this increases the capability of guests on board for their safety underway. As we said before, the helm station is very particular. This central part divides the entrance of the toilet to the captain's driving position. Now that I'm seated here, and I'm actually steering, I have to admit that I feel even safer because I'm surrounded by this structure that can also serve as a handhold at any time. The glass windshield does not come to a stop on the structure. Despite that, here at the helm I do not experience any apparent wind derived from navigation. The instrumentation is all within arm's reach. There's a large 17-inch screen with an optimal tilt to be viewed either sitting or standing. The posture I have at the helm is very similar to what one might have at the wheel of an automobile. The whole structure is very important. The spars are oversized, which makes the R10 a very solid rib, but heavy at the same time. So I'm very curious to find out what is the navigational capability of this rib, but also its performance. Now I'm at 10.8 knots. We're already planing. I increase the gas a little. I'm at 15 knots. My visibility, even sitting here at the helm, is optimal. I can see the bow very well. In this type of navigation, the beginning of the planing, the rib hardly pulls down the stern at all, and therefore does not pull up the bow. But I have to say, at 25 knots, its trim is really optimal. This is a real cruising speed. We are consuming a total of less than 80 litres per hour. On the transom today we have two 300 horsepower Mercury Varado for a total of 600 horsepower. The rib is really wide, its maximum beam is more than 3.6 meters, so I wonder how it will behave when veering. The tubulars touch the water, so I expect great support during the veer. But there is one thing I want to test. When I veer to starboard the opening on the tubular, how will it behave? Because this is a key thing, of course it is convenient, but in navigation it has to work like a real tubular. Let's check it out. OK, my hand on the throttle and maximum focus. I decrease gas a little, we're at 35 knots, and I start a large veer to tighten it later. Let's stay focused. 
Now I try to tighten more and more. I lower the propellers with the trim, otherwise I would cavitate. The dinghy has an incredible sea keeping. It's wonderful. We just passed over our wake and I try to tighten the veer more. I'm on the waves, but look at this, it's incredible. The support is the same. I don't feel vibration, neither water entering on board. I say the engineering of this project is approved. Great. Now it's time for my favorite part. Today in Sardinia, the sea is completely calm. It feels like we're on a lake, so I can get to test the real maximum speed of R10 by Rama Yacht. Let me give you some data before we really test this rib out. We have 21 pitch propellers and the hull is a little dirty. Shipyard claims that with this motorization, the R10 can easily reach and pass 40 knots. So today, as always, I have two goals. The first is to reach them, the second to top it. The gas is totally open, 4,700 RPM, and for now we reach 35.7 knots, with the trim all down. In this phase, I really feel the drag if the tubular's on the water, so I need to pull the bow up. How? With the trim. The engines have started roaring at 5,000 RPM. At 5,750 RPM, ladies and gentlemen, we reached 41.4 knots. Even today, we made it. Today, we went through what are the basic steps of the tradition of this beautiful land, from its deepest mine to the beauties of its unspoiled nature. We did this on a rib that has its roots in something that seems so distant from seafaring tradition. But after all, if you think about it, in Italian the word rama is an anagram of mare.